Well, uh, so what are we going to do today, uh, Cousin P.W.? The same thing we do every day, Melvin. Try to take over the neighborhood. Hey, y'all. Bloodwing here. Back to bring some grumpiness to your internet. I'm going to probably forego any music, lead-in music today, or any outro music for two reasons. One is I've been sick for a few days, and I'm very sleep-deprived, and I'm tired, and I just can't be bothered. And the second is this is actually a little bit of a different uh, video. Uh, this is actually the result of a challenge. Yesterday, my friend, your boy Pat, tagged me in on Twitter and tagged me in at the end of a video that he did in response to this to a hashtag, Make Feminism Less Annoying. <coughs> Excuse me. And the challenge came to him, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, by Ren Michaelis. And the challenge is to give three things that you think that if they happened would make feminism less annoying, if that's even possible. So I figured, what the heck, I'll do this thing. He tagged me in and a couple of other people. Uh, challenge just to to answer this and uh, before I get into it though as I said I have been sick I think my voice is pretty much back to normal but I may cough here and there and I'm sorry if I get into any coughing fits I'll try to cut that out but uh, I'm trying gonna try to make this one take as much as I possibly can so the first thing and, and I thought about this long and hard all day and uh, I opened up notepad and put in what I initially thought was my three answers because I'm old and can't remember so I knew I had to write it down and through the day I kept changing the answers and changing the answers I think I'm now down to my final three that uh, I'm happy with so the first thing would be quit being so smug and holier than thou in your interactions with people that don't agree with you. Quit acting like you consistently have the moral high ground or that you're so smart that you look down your nose at us. And I'm not going to name any names here. But Cousin B.W., you said that. Now, Melvin, I mean it. We're not going to mention any names. Because of B.W., you're... Melvin, now listen to me. We're not mentioning any names. No names, okay? I understand, but... Melvin, for the last time, no names. Do you get it? Okay? No names. Goodness, I know that Melvin means well, but sometimes. But at any rate, as I said, quit being so smug. Y you might actually get more civil interaction from people from our side if you weren't constantly treating us like we were illiterate children that don't understand what you're talking about. Because we're not. We're smarter than you think. We do more research than you even know on this subject. So, yeah. Number one on my list is stop acting so daggone smug. Number two on my list would be admit that there is no need for feminism in Western society anymore. It has won all its battles. There is truly equality. And if anything, the balance, balances have tipped toward women over men. But, you know, we, we've are, all the things that you say that need to be changed in Western society, the wage gap, the, the rape culture, 
All of these things have been debunked over and over and over and over tens of thousands of times. It's probably why there's some in our group that is thinking maybe they want to move on and do something else because they're tired of addressing the same old tired arguments that always comes out of the feminism camp. But it's all been debunked. Now, there are areas in the world that need feminism, absolutely. The Middle East, parts of Africa, just to start. But you sitting here whining and crying about the wage gap is not going to get those people any help. You sitting here minging about how uh, there's a rape culture which doesn't exist over here is not going to help those poor women in the Middle East or in Africa that are actually are living in a rape culture. It's not helping those at all. There are women that need your help and you're not addressing them. I'm not sitting here whining and crying and picking at the patriarchy in Western society on your YouTube videos and your your blogs and your articles and whatever other medium you might use. You're not helping those that really need your help. You claim to be for equality of women. Well, there shouldn't be any borders on that, should there? If you truly, truly care about the fate of women worldwide, You'd be focusing your attention on those places, not here in the West, where the battle's already been won. So that would be number two. Number three, would, would you please finally admit, be honest with yourself, be honest with the rest of us, that feminism has nothing to do with men. In that it has no benefit for men. It's not about equality for everyone. Like your silly little dictionary definition that you always pull out and means absolutely nothing. It's not. As a matter of fact, there are many on your side that would not be happy until they are above men. And in some ways, you already are. Now... My audience is smart. I don't have to go into all those arguments. They've heard it before. You know, how uh, laws and so forth, certain laws and so forth, especially in family court, that lean heavily towards the woman over the man. Uh, you know, the, you've already won your equality. Stop telling us that it's good for men too, because it's not good for men. The only men that I've seen get really involved in feminism turn out to be what's commonly called today cucks. They're just, or beta males. They're, they're just whipped little boys. Like poor Steve Shives with his wife. Oh my goodness. It's cringy to even watch that clip. So don't, don't quit telling us that it's good for us too, because it's not good for us, what you're wanting. It's not good for us. If you truly cared about equality for everyone, you would give up the moniker of feminism and take up the banner of egalitarianism. Your ideas and your fights and your arguments wouldn't be, uh, centered toward one sex or the other but for everybody but they're not even your own name which has been pointed out a million times i know has feminine in it it's about women so just admit that if you would be honest with me and with yourselves and everybody else it would be a whole lot less annoying i'd have more respect for you i still wouldn't agree but if you were at least that honest, I'd have a bit more respect for you. So, what do we got? Let's re 
go back over them just one more time. My three things that could be done to make feminism at least less annoying. Number one, quit being so smug or holier than thou. Number two, admit that there's no need for feminism in Western society. And number three, admit that it is not for equality of men, too. It's all about the women. So I think if you've done those three things and added them with the three things that Pat already talked about and probably added them with the things that my cohorts in this thing are going to bring up, it might be slightly less annoying, maybe a little easier to take. I don't know. Y'all let me know what you think. Pat, hope this answers your challenge. And as always, get out of my yard.